In a traditional LBO, debt has typically comprised 60% to 70% of the financing structure, with the remainder of the purchase price funded by an equity contribution from a private equity fund. Let's go through each of the debt and equity components in detail. We have grouped the primary types of LBO financing sources into the categories shown here, corresponding to their relative ranking in the capital structure. The debt portion of the LBO financing structure may include a broad array of loans, securities, or other debt instruments with varying terms and conditions that appeal to different classes of investors. As a general rule, the higher a given debt instrument ranks in the capital structure hierarchy, the lower its risk, and consequently the lower its cost of capital to the borrower or issuer. However, Cost of capital tends to be inversely related to the flexibility permitted by the applicable debt instrument. For example, bank debt usually represents the least expensive form of LBO financing. At the same time, bank debt is secured by various forms of collateral and governed by maintenance covenants. Bank debt. Bank debt is an integral part of the LBO financing structure, consistently serving as a substantial source of capital also referred to as senior secured credit facilities. It is typically comprised of a revolving credit facility which may be borrowed, repaid, and reborrowed and one or more term loan tranches. Bank debt is issued in the private market. It has restrictive covenants that require the borrower to comply with certain provisions and financial tests throughout the life of the facility. Bank debt typically bears interest payable on a quarterly basis. This type of debt is often referred to as floating rate due to the fact that the borrowing cost varies in accordance with changes to the underlying benchmark rate. So, what are the differences between a revolving credit facility and term loan? Revolving credit facility is a line of credit extended by a bank or group of banks that permits the borrower to draw varying amounts up to a specified aggregate limit for a specified period of time. It is unique in that amounts borrowed can be freely repaid and reborrowed during the term of the facility, subject to agreed-upon conditions set forth in a credit agreement. The majority of companies utilize a revolver or equivalent lending arrangement to provide ongoing liquidity for seasonal working capital needs, capital expenditures, and other general corporate purposes. The revolver is generally the least expensive form of capital in the LBO financing structure typically priced at or slightly below the term loans spread in return for the revolver's low cost. The borrower must sacrifice some flexibility. For example, lenders generally require a first priority security interest lien on certain assets of the borrower and compliance with various covenants. Term loan facilities. A term loan is a loan with a specified maturity that requires principal repayment, also known as amortization according to a defined schedule typically on a quarterly basis. Like a revolver, a traditional term loan for an LBO financing is structured as a first lien debt obligation and requires the borrower to maintain a certain credit profile through compliance with financial maintenance covenants contained in the credit agreement. Unlike a revolver, however, a term loan is fully funded on the date of closing and once principal is repaid it cannot be reborrowed. High-yield bond High-yield bonds are non-investment-grade debt securities that obligate the issuer to make interest payments to bondholders at regularly defined intervals, typically on a semi-annual basis, and repay principal at a stated maturity date, usually 7 to 10 years after issuance. As opposed to term loans, high-yield bonds are non-amortizing with the entire principal due as a bullet payment at maturity. High-yield bonds typically pay interest at a fixed rate, which is priced at issuance, on the basis of a spread to a benchmark treasury. Mezzanine debt refers to a layer of capital that lies between traditional debt and equity. Mezzanine debt is a highly negotiated instrument between the issuer and investors that is tailored to meet the financing needs of the specific transaction and required investor returns. As such, mezzanine debt allows great flexibility in structuring terms, conducive to issuer and investor alike. For private equity firms, mezzanine debt provides incremental capital at a cost below that of equity, which enables them to stretch leverage levels and purchase price when alternative capital sources are inaccessible. Equity contribution. 
The remaining portion of LBO funding comes in the form of an equity contribution by the private equity fund. The equity contribution percentage typically ranges from approximately 30% to 40% of the LBO financing structure. Although this may vary depending on debt market conditions, the equity contribution provides a cushion for lenders and bondholders in the event that the company's enterprise value deteriorates, as equity value is eliminated before debt holders lose recovery value.